Shalom and welcome. My name is Ev, and I want to welcome you to the Matthew from Jewish Perspective teaching. I'm a Jewish believer in Jesus, and I was born in Jerusalem to both Jewish parents. And I was never raised to believe in the Bible, let alone the New Testament. But later on in my life, I met someone that showed me the New Testament. And to my huge surprise, that New Testament was in Hebrew, my language. I never thought that the New Testament is in Hebrew or should be in Hebrew because the way I thought about it, the New Testament is the Bible for the Christians. We Jews, if we want to believe in God, if we want to be religious, we have our own Bible, the Tanakh, the, the Torah, the Nevi'im, the prophet, and the Ketuvim, the writings. We don't need any extension to that. But when I opened the book of the New Testament, starting with the Gospel of Matthew, I was just amazed. I couldn't believe my eyes. First of all, it's in Hebrew. Second of all, every name that is mentioned on the very first page of the Gospel of Matthew in the New Testament, it's Jewish people. What are they doing in the book of the Christians? Well, little did I know that the book of the New Testament was written by Jewish people, pretty much other than one, and it talks about the Jewish Messiah. I always heard the name Jesus, and I thought that was the, that person that started Christianity, that same religion that honestly persecuted the Jews throughout history. I thought this book is going to be about maybe the birth of the Pope or how to kill Jews, chapter 1, how to kill Jews, chapter 2, and so forth. I didn't know it's going to talk about Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David. Well, soon after that, it took me about a few months and I personally came to saving faith in Jesus, which we Jewish people call him Yeshua, which means in Hebrew, salvation. And I would love to go over the book of Matthew with you and to point out how Jewish that book is because it talks about a very Jewish person, the Jewish Messiah, the King of the Jews, Yeshua, which most people around the world know as Jesus Christ in Hebrew, Yeshua, the Messiah. Before we open Matthew chapter 1, I just want to mention some very interesting facts. Did you know that in the book of Matthew, there are 96 quotes from the Old Testament? Why do you think Matthew used so many quotes? Because he was trying to reach Jewish people with the gospel message. He has more quotes to the Old Testament than any other gospel. By far, some of them has like 34, or 50, or maybe 60, but he has 96 quotes from the, for the Old Testament prophecies. From the very first page, we see God's purpose in the Gospel of Matthew to reach the Jewish people with the Gospel first. You know, the gospel came from the Jewish people. The Savior came from the Jewish people. And therefore, we see in Scripture, in the New Testament, that it says that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to the Jew first and also to the nations. And as we will see together, Matthew is, is using that approach. He's trying to reach the Jewish people first. So let's see how he does that. Matthew chapter 1, the very first verse says this. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Let's pause here for a second. You know, many Christians ask me, Ze'ev, how, how do we share the gospel with Jewish people? Well, I think Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 is a very good point to start. Well, you see, Matthew, this is what he says. He says, the genealogy of Jesus Christ, as I mentioned to Jewish people, Yeshua the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. You see, immediately Matthew mentions David and Abraham, both Jewish, obviously. It's not about the Pope, to my surprise, it's David and Abraham. Now, as we all know, 
Abraham lived way before the time of David. So why do you think Matthew, trying to read Jewish people, mentions David first? Well, because any Jewish person in any generation, back then 2,000 years ago, and also today in Israel, for people like me, we all know that the Messiah of Israel is the son of David. He should come from the seed of David. If you say to a Jewish person, son of David, it's pretty much you said to him, the Messiah. It means the same thing for us. And then he also mentions son of Abraham, which actually the genealogy chronologically starts with Abraham. So I want us to start with the same order of the genealogy that Matthew goes by. Starting in verse 2, Matthew is saying, Abraham begot Isaac. So he starts with Abraham. I want us to go back together to the book of Genesis chapter 12 and see together why he is starting with Abraham. What was so significant about Abraham and what God promised to Abraham that caused Matthew to start with him when he talks about the Messiah. Let's see it together. In Genesis chapter 12, you know the story. God calls Abraham to leave everything that he knows and everything he's familiar with, and go to a land that he will show him. And then it says in verse 1, The Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. You see, God is telling to Abram, you will just go in faith to the place that I will show you later on. I will make you a great nation, which we know is the nation of Israel. I will bless you, make your name great, and then you shall be a blessing. You see, God didn't just want to bless Abraham for the sake of blessing Abraham. He wanted to make Abraham a blessing to others. And then he's saying, is telling Abraham, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. He's telling Abraham, whoever bless you is going to be blessed by me, whoever will curse you is going to be cursed by me, and then he's saying the remarkable statement that in you, Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed. All the families of the earth will be blessed from Abraham. Okay, we saw it here, now I want to see it again as we move forward with the story of Abraham to Genesis chapter 22. You know this, the famous story of the binding of Isaac, and just after uh, Abraham is in an exceptional way, obeying God, willing to sacrifice his only begotten son, the son, his Isaac, the one through which that promise had to be fulfilled. Through him, through Abraham, God said, I will bless all the families of the earth, and now it should come through his son, he knows that, but nevertheless, he's willing to sacrifice him. His one and only son, in a, it wasn't his only son in the physical sense, but it was his only son when it comes to the promise that through him, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So we read in Genesis chapter 22, after Abraham obeyed God, God is telling Abraham in verse 18, he's telling him, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. You see the difference between here and Genesis chapter 12? What is the difference? Well, here God is mentioning a seed. In Genesis chapter 12, he said, In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And over here it says, In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now, the Apostle Paul talks about these two promises from Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis chapter 22 when he talks to the Gentile church, the Galatians, in Galatians chapter 3. 
we can see there in verse 8 where he says, And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be saved. You see, you see he's mentioning in you. He's still not mentioning the seed. That's the reference to Genesis chapter 12. But then if we move on to verse 16 in that same chapter, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed, that's Genesis chapter 22, were the promises made. He does not say, And to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to your seed, who is Christ. You see what Paul is saying here? He's saying that that promise that God promised to Abraham to bless all the families of the earth through his seed in singular, one very specific seed is the Messiah himself that will come through him. Okay, so that makes it very clear why, why Matthew starting with Abraham, right? Because that's where the promise starts. So let's start, let's try to follow that together with Matthew. He's saying Abraham begat Isaac. So let's go back to the book of Genesis and see what God promised to Isaac. So that's in Genesis chapter 26. Let's open there together. If you can look yourself in your Bibles with me or look on the screen. It says here, chapter 26 in Genesis, God is speaking to uh, Isaac and he's saying in verse 4, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The exact same promise that he promised to Abraham in chapter 22. Now, speaking to Isaac, God promised Isaac the very same thing, that in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. So, I just want to put something in brackets. I did mention in the beginning that the gospel should go to the Jew first, but you see God's bigger plan here, that through Israel, all the families of the earth will be blessed through the Messiah of Israel that will come from Abraham and Isaac. Let's continue now with Matthew from Isaac to Jacob, because Matthew is saying that Isaac begot Jacob. For that, we have to just go two more chapters forward in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 28. Let me tell you a little bit about the context, what's happening here. Well, it was just after Jacob tricked his brother Esau and he stole his blessing from, from his uh, father, you know, the blessing for the firstborn now was given to Jacob, although he wasn't really the firstborn, he came out second, right? But then, after he tricked him, so the, the thought came that, well, you know, now Esau will try to kill him, and his mother really motivated his father and telling him, hey, we need, really need to send Jacob away because we want him to marry a good woman, not like those Canaanites that Esau married, where they really didn't like them that much. So she wanted Jacob to marry well. So they sent him to her family back in Haran. So Jacob is on his way to Haran to find a wife. Why would the man need a wife? Well, because we need to continue the genealogy of the Messiah, right? That promise of the seed needs to continue from somewhere. And now when Jacob has the blessing of the firstborn, that would come through Jacob. So let's see what happens when he's on his journey to find his wife. We see that in verse 10. Genesis 28 verse 10 says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached the heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending on descending on it. 
he's dreaming using that stone as a pillow and he sees a ladder and one end of the ladder is touching the earth but the other top of the ladder is reaching the heaven and the angels of God are ascending and descending on that ladder this is quite remarkable and then we continue to read in verse 13 and it says and behold the Lord stood above it and said I am the Lord God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac you see God is mentioning to Jacob that he is the God of his grandfather and father Abraham and Isaac why is he doing that because well he promised them something didn't he and then it says the land on which you lie I will give to you and your descendants also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth you shall spread abroad as to the west and the east to the north and the south and in you and in your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed the very same promise now is being given by God to Jacob do you see the promise of that seed that we know from Paul from Galatians chapter 3 that through him all the families of the earth will be blessed we can follow it now from Abraham to Isaac and then to Jacob before we continue I want us to note what was the reaction of Jacob to this remarkable dream that he had and, and what God was promising to him. It says here in verse 16, Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He said, Surely the Lord is in this place. I did not know it. I didn't know that God can be here on earth. It says, He's here. Surely He's here. It's amazing. I didn't know that. That's what Jacob is saying. I didn't know that. And he, and he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. He's saying, Well, if God is here, this is the house of God here on earth. Well, this is the gate to heaven. I saw the letter. I saw it, it reaches the heaven. And it's all connected from here on earth. Earth meets heaven right here. This is the house of God. And this is the gate to heaven. And then it says in verse 19, And he called the name of that place Bethel. Why did he name that place Bethel? Because Bethel in Hebrew means Bethel, the house of God. Jacob, at the very location where God promised him, that through him and his seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed, named that place Bethel, the house of God, because he, because he had the revelation that God can actually dwell here on earth, that there is a connection right here from earth when God dwells on earth, it's the gate to heaven. Now let's think how all that relates to the Messiah. Well, we know from the book of John, the very first chapter, it says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In Jesus, in Yeshua, God was dwelling on the earth. God was, that was the way, the place that he was, he tabernacled among us. He dwelt among us in Yeshua. So in a way we can see that it's a type and shadow, Beth El is a type and shadow of Yeshua, of the house of God here on earth that's connect, that connects between heaven and earth. Remember what else Jacob has said? He said that it's not just the house of God, it's the gate to heaven. Remember John chapter 10, what Yeshua said over there? In verse 9, he says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Yeshua is the house of God. Yeshua is the gate to heaven. Yeshua is that seed that God promised to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob through whom all the families of the earth will be blessed. You see, 
Salvation, as it says in the New Testament, comes from the Jews. It comes through the fulfillments of God's promises to the Jewish people, to the Jewish patriarchs, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The only way for us to heaven, the only way for us to reach heaven, to be with God, to be united with God, is through repentance of our sin and faith in that very one, that very seed that God promised that He will bring to us the Savior that will be a blessing to Abraham, to the people of Abraham, the people of Israel, and through them to all the families of the earth. I hope that you're just excited about that as me. And if this is the first time that you heard that today, I personally invite you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, to welcome Jesus, to welcome that seed, that Messiah that God promised to us, to the Jewish people and to all the nations, wherever you are right now. I beg of you, I ask you, I encourage you, just say after me, God, I thank you that you provided a way for me to reach heaven, that you revealed yourself to me that you can actually dwell here on earth, that there is a way for me to meet you, to be with you, that you would dwell with me, that I will dwell with you. And I thank you for that. I thank you that you sent Jesus, Yeshua, the, the King of the Jews, the King of Israel, and the Savior of the world to save me. I thank you for that. I believe in Him. I believe that He died for my sin. And I believe that after three days, you raised Him from the dead. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, Amen and Amen. I'll see you at the next episode of Matthew from Jewish Perspective as we continue with Matthew on this journey of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah. Thank you, God bless you, and I will see you next time. Shalom. Shalom.